हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज नरेंद्र कुमार द्विवेदी वंस अगेन वेलकमिंग यू ऑल इन द चैनल नरेंद्र कुमार द्विवेदी द फिजिक्स लवर सो स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव कवर्ड द एंटायर फर्स्ट यूनिट इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स वेयर द चार्ज रिमेन्स स्टैटिक एंड ऑल ऑफ इट्स इफेक्ट्स एसोसिएटेड दे वर डिस्कस्ड अंडर इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स नाउ इट्स नॉट ऑलवेज दैट चार्ज इज स्टैटिक what is charge moves so there is a separate branch of physics studying all the motion of charges through any cross section of the conductor and that branch which deals with the motion of charges is called current electricity so let's start unit 2 class 12 current electricity current electricity the very first chapter under this current electricity that we are starting is electric current so electric current okay students so electric current just to introduce this electric current what is basically electric current now for introduction let's have the atomic theory of conductors like silver aluminium copper etc so uh inside that there is positively charged nucleus and around that positively charged nucleus there are electrons orbiting in different orbits like this so the outermost electron revolving around the positively charged nucleus in the atom of such conductors they are treated to be free electrons though they are not free but as their separation from the nucleus is far and hence the force of attraction or the binding energy that the nucleus is giving to this outermost revolving electron is quite negligible quite less uh hence these outermost revolving electrons are treated to be free electrons just by gaining a very small very feeble energy from the surrounding or the environment they are available in they are freed from the influence of nucleus and they start roaming inside the surface of the conductor and what happens to this positively charged now ion after removing that free electron that starts vibrating due to that thermal energy and the amplitude of vibration now depends upon the temperature available in its surrounding now as these electrons start moving or they are moving so they actually do not come out of the surface of conductor they remain inside the surface of the conductor and as there are many free electrons present inside the conductor so that uh, if we for instance consider a small area of that conductor so the number of electrons coming out of that small area they vary nearly equal to the number of electrons crossing at the same moment the opposite area of the conductor and hence we do not have any net charge moving and hence the current flowing through the surface of the conductor is zero so now as electrons don't have freedom to come out of the conductor or we can say the electric current is the property or characteristic of the conducting surface as a whole and hence this electric current is macroscopic and is a scalar quantity now 
let's have definition of electric current now to define it to define it analytically first <coughs> we can define it as number of charges flowing through any cross section of the conductor in unit time so that is called electric current that is i is treated to be number of charge crossing through any cross section in unit time so that's called electric current <coughs> now what if the rate of flow or the number of flow of charge varies with respect to changing time or we say flow of rate of flow of charge varies in that condition we say the number of charge or change in flow of number of charge per unit change in time that's called uh, the rate of flow of charge this is dq upon dt we define now this as this one now see if there are small n number of electrons flowing uh, through that cross section so under that condition we can say i to be equals to using quantization property q equals to n into e so n into e upon t and here from the value of n now comes out to be i into t upon e so this way we can find the number of electrons crossing any area any cross section of the conductor in set time now for convention of direction of electric current we can say in the year of 1820 ampere put forward the convention for the direction of current now he said or he observed the direction of current is along the direction of flow of positive charges in case of metallic conductors the flowing charges are electrons and hence the current flows in the direction opposite to the direction of flow of electrons whereas in case of uh, electrolytes like copper sulfate nacl etc all positive and negative ions move and hence they participate in the e electric current they both the motion of both participate in the uh, electric current now in case of gases normally at normal conditions normal temperature normal uh, electric field and all the gases do not have any charge but when the very intense electromagnetic radiation like x rays is passed through that gaseous medium or the very large potential difference is applied along that medium then the gaseous medium ionizes and hence charges are created okay now let's discuss the unit of electric current now for units we can say in si system we have current to be uh, in amperes and ampere is further defined as 1 ampere equals to 1 coulomb upon 1 second whereas in case of cgs system in cgs we have two cgs units in electrostatics unit we have this to be in stat ampere so 1 stat ampere equal to 1 stat coulomb upon 1 second and in case of electromagnetic unit we have 
एम कूलम सॉरी एम एम पी एफ सो वन एम एम पी एफ इज जस्ट इक्वल टू वन एम कूलम अपॉन वन सेकेंड सो दिस वे वी कैन हैव द यूनिट्स इन बोथ एस आई एंड सी जी एस सिस्टम ओके सो नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस द रिलेशन बिटवीन एस आई यूनिट एंड सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट सो एज वी हैव एम पी एफ इन एस आई वन एम पी एफ इज इक्वल टू टू वन कूलम अपॉन वन सेकेंड नाउ दिस कूलम कैन बी रिटर्न इन ESU CGS unit as 3 into 10 pass to 9 stat coulomb upon 1 second so we have the conversion of SI unit of electric current 1 ampere as 3 into 10 pass to 9 stat ampere and now for emu we can still have 1 ampere also we can write also 1 ampere equals to 1 coulomb upon 1 second and which is in amp coulomb 1 upon 10 amp coulomb upon 1 second so here we have the relation between si and cgs emu electromagnetic unit as 1 by 10 एम एम्पियर सो दिस इज द रिलेशनशिप विच विल बी यूज ट्यूरिंग द न्यूमरिकल सो लेट्स डिस्कस नाउ द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट इन साइड द कंडक्टर एंड द रिलेशन बिटवीन जेट वेलॉसिटी एंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ओके शून सो दिस इज आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस एंड रिलेशन बिटवीन ड्रिफ्ट वेलॉसिटी एंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एज डिस्कस्ड इन द इंट्रोडक्शन इंट्रोडक्टरी पोर्शन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दैट इन साइड द कंडक्टर्स लाइक सिल्वर एल्यूमिनियम कॉपर ऑल द फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स स्टार्ट वाइब्रेटिंग स्टार्ट मूविंग इन रेंडम फैशन due to the thermal energy available around around the conductor and the ions after removing that free electron they start vibrating about their mean position due to that thermal energy now the amplitude of vibration of such ions depend upon the temperature available around that surrounding or in that surrounding so at particular moment the number of electrons crossing any cross section of that conductor in any particular direction is nearly equal to the number of electrons crossing the opposite cross section of the conductor at the same moment and hence the electrons do not have any preferred direction of their motion and hence the net transport of charge through that conductor in unit time is zero and hence conductor does not allow any electric current to flow but what happens when the electric potential is applied due to the application of electric potential there is an electric field set up as e equals to v by l along the length of the conductor l that electric field now applies the force minus e into e on the electrons and drives them and uh, assign them a particular direction and hence there is net transport of electrons in unit time and hence that conductor is supposed to allow the flow of charges through it and the electrons start moving in a certain direction opposite to the applied electric field let's see now the relation between drift velocity and electric field so suppose we have now our conductor uh, of length say l and these are two ends of it suppose this is the conductor having length l and here 
we apply the potential difference across its ends. So the potential difference applied is say V. Now this sets up the electric field around this. But the electrons of this conductor, free electrons, they experience force which is just equals to minus E into E opposite to the direction of electric field set up there just because of this application of electric potential. So as uh, in the absence of this electric potential, the uh, what should I say thermal velocity of electrons, free electrons is randomly distributed. So, the average thermal velocity that is u equals to u1 plus u2 plus this, this u in upon n. So, this average thermal velocity is 0 as the electrons do not have any fixed or preferred direction for their flow and hence we say the electric current is zero. This is, remember student, this is thermal velocity which is average thermal velocity which is zero. Just because they don't have any preferred direction. But it's not like average speed is zero. Now, due to the application of this electric potential across the length of this conductor, there is an electric field set up across its length and that electric field is equal to V by L. Now this electric field puts the electron in a fixed direction and the, and the direction is opposite to the, uh, to the direction of electric field and hence they start moving or I must say they gain uh, certain, uh, certain velocity due to this electric field and the acceleration that is produced just because of this force which is equal to minus E into E on the free electrons, the acceleration gained by the electrons is A equals to minus E into E by M. So just because of this acceleration, they start moving, they start drifting. So at any given time, the velocity gained by the electron is written to be V1 which is equals to U1 plus a tau 1 where u1 is the thermal velocity and a tau 1 is the is the velocity or is the value of velocity gained by the electron by the application of electric field similarly we can write v2 to be equals to u2 plus a tau 2 and Vn to be equals to Un plus A tau N. Now, let's calculate the average of these velocities which will be called the drift velocity. So, the drift velocity Vd now is equal to V1 plus V2 plus Vn upon N. Now let's place the values back here. So we have now u1 plus a tau 1 as the value for v1. Now for v2 we have u2 plus a tau 2 plus and for nth you have un plus a tau n whole upon n. Now, just writing all thermal velocities together and the velocity gained by the application of electric field together. So, we have the rearrangement of this equation as u1 plus u2 plus un upon n. This is the average thermal velocity which will be written to be 0. I must write this to be 0 here as well. <clears throat> now, A will be common in all 
and here inside tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau n uh, upon n. So this average thermal velocity will be zero as electrons in the absence of electric field do not have any preferred direction. So this will be written to be zero plus here we have a and this will be written as tau the average relaxation time and hence we now as we just place the value of a back here so we have the relation between v d drift velocity which is equals to minus e e upon m into tau so this is the relationship that's all for today students